everybody. Shabri Bird, Quantum Agriculture, sitting here in Ireland with one of our favorite colleagues, David Wallace. David has been organizing for organics and biodynamics and now radionics and is now a proud owner of a quantum agriculture radionics instrument. So David, could you tell us what you do now? I hear you're doing a lot of research in organic and non-organic. No, we're doing no organic research. Uh, <laughs> Well. It's all biological farming, and uh, we have a project that has EU funding uh, for a transition from a conventional, conventional or traditional, typical chemical farming type systems to a more biological type farming that's soil friendly. And it's a five-year project, and we have 12 farmers. Uh, we call them the 12 disciples at this stage, with the hope <laughs> and the intention that at the end of the project they become 12 apostles. And uh, we want to see the feasibility in our climate and what level of ad adaptation of principles and methods that are used abroad, particularly in the States, uh, that may need modification for a very positive effect here over the five-year period so that we can trans transition our soils to a much more uh, robust biology and thus better plant health, plant function. And um, that's the bones of it, and we need to see in that process, is, is it economically feasible as well? Mm -hmm. And how's it going? What, what are you in year two now? We're just beginning year two. Um, yeah, we've come up with some very interesting results. One of the we sort of disappointment we had was we were getting very low refractometer readings. Irris irrespective of what amendments we were using, we could never raise the brick, bricks levels high for more than a few days, and we could never he reach the sort of magic number of 12 and um, we started to question this um, more and more and more and our international consultant was over from Australia, Christine Jones, in late October, November and after a couple of weeks she was quite puzzled as to what was going on and, um, but to her credit she followed it up and sent on some information for us and um, we came we, to the realisation that part of our problem is as a consequence of our very wet soils, particularly in the winter and the spring, rhizosheath development is poor and is easily washed away. There's more nitrif nitrification taking place. And the interesting thing, and you laughed at me when I said this to you a couple of weeks ago, you laughed heartily because you thought it was so funny. But now you know that it's a truth, is that when we do get maybe from the middle of May to the middle of August, 14 consecutive days of dry weather, at the hugely hot temperatures of 18 <laughs> to 20 degrees, we're actually having plants that are drought stressed. Yeah, I believe you. And that is a consequence of the rise of sheep being very poorly developed as a, a, due to the, um, the moisture and the, the level of free water which is dissolving and diluting. And it's making the plants really lazy as well. Why would they have to work hard when if they're getting chemical fertilizer, let's say, and it's in solution, they're drinking it up, but they're not getting the trace elements to the same extent that they need them mm. because that, that's a function of the biology working in, 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 in synchrony with them. So it lends itself to more disease. But at least we've had in the first year the beginnings of a discovery of not so much what is wrong, but how do we go about improving it? Uh -huh. And so did any solutions come forward this weekend with you? Because a lot of your farmers were in the room. Yeah, and uh, this course was probably different. It was um, flagged as an advanced course, which it was. Um, it really wasn't suitable for beginners to be at without any understanding of biological farming. Um, it wouldn't have been fair. It wouldn't have been fair. I to got it. The, so what the was the solution that you might have heard this weekend? Well, first of all, it was the, the teasing out of what the problem was. Yeah. Too much nitrates. And uh, 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 this... As a consequence of this, the plant being in the position that it had no choice but when it's taking up water, but it is taking up these nitrates in solution. It's not in a, in a position to not take them up. And then there's the uh, uh, 10 units of sugar energy, carbohydrate energy, is, is needed to uh, uh, transform that nitrate to ammonium first and then into an amino acid, attach it to amino acid. So now the, the, the plant has the double problem in that it's already photosynthesizing, photosynthesizing at a relatively low level. It has a, a drain on its resources to do something with this salt nitrogen, and uh, it's making amino acids, and it's leaving 
too little energy left for all the other functions it needs to carry So what out. are the solutions? I know there was one. I heard one myself. 505. Yeah, well, oak barks. Yes. Lots of oak bark. Yeah. So. And get our silica process working, get our boron working, go back to the biochemical sequence, which after 30 years of endeavour that you has got to a point of, I shan't say perfection because there isn't perfection, but certainly to a point where it has, it's an elegant and, and logical understanding of how things work. And uh, we've been paying quite a bit of attention to it, but I think we're going to double up our efforts <laughs> on that and pay a little more attention to it mm -hmm. as time goes on. Also, too, Shabri, monocropping, not having understories, having uh, monocrop uh, pasture swords, these don't lend themselves to uh, getting a good root proliferation, mm. good root diversity, good root, good root depth, and as a consequence of that, more oxygen being taken in, more exchange, more activity, more engagement. And uh, that's part of it. It's never a single solution uh, answer because biological farming, by its very nature, is an holistic approach. So we have to take as many aspects of it into account as we possibly can and uh, move them all forward. So now, extent. aren't there some new reg regulations coming up where organics will be more and more required in, Aust in uh, Ireland? I've been sort of hearing that rumor. Mm, not to my knowledge. Uh, uh, there wish. may be more regulations in trying to control our losses of nitrogen and our mismanagement of them, but um, organics per se, without it being based on the principles of biological farming, mm. it's not going to do any more. You're absolutely any less right. For us, you know? Yeah, organics often means in some countries what's not in. Well, food I gather the, the book of rules is thou shalt not yeah. from beginning to end rather yeah. than thou shall. So, yeah. you know, we're in biological farming. It, it, I, I think the principles of biological farming are equally as applicable to a, an organic farm, a biodynamic farm, a farm in transition, or a conventional farm that wants to look toward a more sustainable and regenerative way of going about their business. Well, I think you're one of the key people in this country that's been forwarding this from the first time we started making association with you five years ago. And you've just become key in the Biodynamic Association, but you brought together regular straight farmers and biodynamic and biological. And that's a huge commitment, and I appreciate you so much for that. And I yeah. wanted people to know about David Wallace well, in Ireland. Well, well, well we, we, it's been collaborative work. Of and, course. Uh, I'm only one of a number, but we adopted a very, very pragmatic policy in relation to, because I do believe that biodynamics has significant, um, the, the capability to offer a, a, a lot of solutions, a, a, a compendium of, 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 of patterns, if you like, that, get, that it can in, enhance or bring about this. But, but... I, I, I've seen that uh, if you, enthusiasm is one thing, but respect is another thing. And you must respect the commercial farmer who has no inkling or understanding of this. Now, I think it's changed quite a bit in the last 20 years with more people reading the, and watching the internet and, and, and picking up things and conversations are changing. But biodynamics is a hard ask for your first time listening to it coming from a commercial mm -hmm. farmer position. And the respect needs to be there that farmers uh, in, in this mode of work uh, need to be gradually brought towards the principles of biological farming first. Yep. And then you've laid the foundation yep. to build on top of that. Well, and, that's and, exactly and, what and, quantum and, agriculture is yeah. for. The four yeah. legs of our table is how yeah. plants grow, yeah. biologically building your soil, then biodynamics, biodynamics yeah. and then the quantum yeah. leap. Yeah. Yep, because yeah. that way, because the biodynamics without that biologically active soil means it's not going to go anywhere. And there is an obligation on all of us worldwide interested in biodynamics to move, move outside our own comfortable circles. And, you know, it's very easy to be comfortable among your own. Um, but that's not going to get more and more people on board. And we have to meet people halfway at the very least, if not more than halfway. And, you know, when an, an approach like that is, is made, uh, it does motivate the better parts of people's character on the other side. And I think they're going to be more receptive. And I think we've already seen that there's more and more of a positive reception towards mm -hmm. what biodynamics can do. And I think as well, the fact that it is 
is rooted in, in, in a fundamental aspect of science that's part of a new transformative way of thinking, and that is quantum quantum physics and yeah. consciousness and all of that comes into it. And well, I think Hugh Lovell also yeah. explains so well yeah. to basic farmers biodynamics in a way they've yeah. never heard it. Probably. Well, that's why we keep asking him back, Shabber. Well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, David, thank you very, very much. Welcome. I'm thank so you. happy.